248 limbs in a person's body. So, the day of Pentecost, when it points towards the Feast of Trumpets, is actually on a timeline. Now, let me tell you something. And if I don't get anything else out today, this is fine. Because I'm setting you up for the revelation of your life. I have a bachelor's degree with an emphasis in theology and psychology. I have a master's in counseling with an emphasis in theology. I have a master's in divinity, which is a theology degree, pre-doctoral. I have a doctor's degree from the school of business, which requires for me to know theology to do business. I'm telling you 100% for sure that after 27 years of ministry and education, I am absolutely convinced of this one thing. The Bible does not say that you know the day nor the hour of the return of Jesus Christ. But it does not say you will not know the season. And what I'm going to show you in the coming weeks is when you add to this six, the other four, you see the chronology of time according to the clock of God. And you can see a little bit right here from Passover to the Feast of Weeks to the church right now waiting on the Feast of Trumpets. And the Jewish people were so inundated with understanding time that they even broke it down and understood the law by the concept of a solar calendar. And they turned around and said even the body, the limbs of the body is connected to understanding the law. This is amazing. Now watch this. They would take the Omar and they would hold it up. The priest would hold up the sheave on the Passover, the day after Passover, and he would wave it. And the entire assembly would go crazy praising God. They started worshiping God and giving him praise because rooted and grounded in their theology, in the mitzvah, in the Talmud, was the understanding that God is on a clock. Even though God is not bound by time because if there was time in heaven, there would be no God. Because he changes not and if there was time in heaven, he'd have to change. But don't think that God is not the inventor of time. And do not think that he's not on a time clock. And do not think that while you do not know the day or the hour, you most certainly will know the season. And the Bible begins to say that what they did is they would take that omor and they would lift up the grain before the Lord. That, 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 that barley, they'd lift it up before the Lord. I dropped my barley. Hold on. They'd lift up the barley and they would say, God, we know that the Passover, you sent the sacrificial lamb. And that while our children should be dead, they should be in jail, they should be hooked on meth, the blessings of God has come to this house. And the Lamb of God was slain from the foundation of the world. We have misdefined what it means to be Pentecostal. Being Pentecostal does not have nothing, anything to do with the dress code. It has nothing to do with whether you go to the movies or not or whether you go mixed bathing. I never understood that because there's no soap involved in the first place. In these 50 days, counting backwards from the Passover, make sure you understand something very clearly. You are saved by grace not of works, lest any man should boast. And on the day of the Passover, the day after the Passover, they'd start this first fruits in the counting of the week of feast or the, the day of Pentecost, and they'd go 50, 49, 48, and they'd count down to the day of Pentecost. But the Pentecostal experience, ladies and gentlemen, is rooted in this concept. During this 50 days, Every day, you would search your heart and your character for flaws. 
and you would go to God in earnestness by the blood of the Lamb and that he's already paid the price by his broken body. And you would say, God, if there's any way unpleasing in me, please show me and take it out. And for 50 days, they would bow their head in a holy assembly celebrating the Passover and the redemptive qualities of the blood of the Lamb. And on 50, they'd say, God, I'm sorry for my anger. And they would journal, they would actually write, and they would reflect about their character flaws. Could you please, someone tell me, that if Pentecost started out that way, why are we known today as people with no character? Why is a charismatic movement reeked in fallen ministers? But see, these things, ladies and gentlemen, ought not to be so. The Pentecostal experience is not rooted and grounded in a man in a hotel with another woman. The Pentecostal experience is not rooted and grounded in goofiness and no all knowledge of theology. The Pentecostal experience is rooted and grounded in people who understood you're saved by grace. It's understood by Pentecostal people that you have 50 days to make an impact on the harvest because the Lord is coming back. Pentecost is a representation that we live lives holy and separated unto him. And we search our heart for those things that are wrong inside of us. We've made it about tongues. Number one, in the temple of Delphi, the gods, when they stood in front of the people who worshipped them, were known to have spoken in tongues. And in the Greek culture, tongues became known as a sign of someone who was in the presence of the gods. And you all know, if you were here last week, that tongues is a precious gift from God. Amen? But it's not rooted and grounded in the dialect. It's rooted and grounded in the fact that when you have the Holy Spirit inhabiting you through the gifts, it should be the thing that brings the presence of God in your life. The priest stood up and he waved the first fruits. And he waved them and the crowd went wild because they got it. I get it. I'm saved by grace. I'm going to prove that further in just a minute. I'm saved by grace. The Lamb of God was slain. The death angel had to pass by my door. That's why Paul said, death, where is your sting grave? Where is your victory? In the feast of Passover, they woke back up, and on that first day, when they see what God had done, when they saw their children alive, they went and grabbed the best gift they could find. And they stood up, and that priest sounded the shofar and began to wave the Omor in front of the people of Israel. And Israel stood up and praised God with the loudest praise they had ever seen because Israel understood God as a deliverer. Israel understood God as powerful. Israel understood God not as a God, not as a one of many gods, not as pantheism or pluralism or secretism. Israel understood him as one God whose name is Jehovah. He's the mighty God of Israel. Praise the name of the living God. And then look at what the priest would do. 50, 49, got to get us to next week's sermon. 48, 47, 46, God, I'm sorry. 45, God, forgive me. 43, God, I didn't mean to break your heart. 42, God, I'm sorry for an offering that caused me nothing. 42, 41, 40, 39, 38, 37, 36, 30, 29, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 
1870, God, forgive me. I want to be holy. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my mind be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Ten, nine, eight, seven. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly or stands in the way of the sinner or sits in the seat of the scornful. For his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law he'll meditate both day and night. He'll be like a tree planted by rivers of living water. And in his season I shall produce my fruit. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. Blessed is the man that learns the word of God, rightly dividing the word of truth. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word of God became flesh and dwelt among us. And they called him Emmanuel, God with us. Five, four, three, two, one. And the priest laid down the harvest, prepared for the feast of the trumpets. The priest held up the two breads. Why was there two on the day of Pentecost? Because on that day, the Jewish converts and the Gentiles in Cornelius' house became one. On that day, Jesus, who was the unleavened bread, paid the price for the leavened bread. The difference between Passover and the day of Pentecost is that at Passover, the bread was unleavened. On the day of Pentecost, it was leavened bread. Read your scriptures. What's that mean for you? I'll tell you what it means for you. It means that Jesus Christ stood up and the priest symbolically held up two loaves of bread. One representing Jesus Christ in the final work of the Yom Kippur, the day of atonement. He held it up and the shofars blown, celebrating the coming of the trumpets of festivals. And then he turned around and he held up a piece of bread that had yeast in it, showing you and I that it is by grace you're saved, not of works. Because there was yeast in it to represent the fact that the church will not be perfect until the Feast of Trumpets. That you don't have to walk around in fear of your salvation during the 50 weeks of Pentecost. We've made the Pentecostal experience about legalism that if you don't do this, you're out. When the truth is the Pentecostal experience is about 50 days of sanctification while you're on this earth waiting for the trump of God so that that which is imperfect becomes perfect. The great high priest took and held the bread up and it had yeast in it and every one of those Jews went. They'd never seen it. Bread held up with yeast in it. The day of Pentecost reminded them that had it not been for Yom Kippur, had it not been for the Passover, had it not been for the Lamb of God who was slain and put on the doorpost of every Hebrew home, that the death angel would have had its way in their family. And they held up a bread with, with, with yeast in it and said, I want you to know that you're saved because of my work. And I have you in the palm of my hand. And you know what he wants to do with you? Well, he set it up for next week, getting deeper into these feasts. Deeper into the understanding of Pentecost. He had bread in his hand because during 50 weeks, excuse me, 50 days, 7 weeks, he plans on blessing it, breaking it, so he can give it. And you're never going to be who you need to be in Christ until you learn to be blessed by God and bless God. <laughs>